Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly, I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of a uh, lice, uh, something, or, or Lear, uh, Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my God. Tell me, have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Oh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. The Divine Syndicate. Does that name mean anything to you, by any chance? Not at all. But it is a very pretty name. Uh, thank you, miss. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear.
When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half-asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiments on the ventilation system. First of all, I need to visit the colonial collection room to see how those caterpillars dropped onto the deadly plants. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. We are unable to see the interior of the colonial collection room. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. The power is on. The engine has started. The ventilation system is working. This is one of the... Excellent. This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Before I activate the fan, I need to check if the interior of the colonial collection room can be seen from here. We can see the interior of the colonial collection room from this window. Perfect. Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. It works perfectly, Holmes. Bravo! Now, if you could just help me to get rid of these caterpillars. Perfect. Now we know how the murder of Montague Dunn was carried out, by activating both Albert's and Mr. Hamish's fans. 
but only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the colonial collection room. Let's go to Scotland Yard. Inspector, I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it. I'll send the lads around to arrest him. Very good. I shall wait to hear from you. Inspector, I came here as quickly as I could. Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. Holmes, my God! Yes, we found him like that. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. Holmes, his left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the colonial collection room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter and so, the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I have another idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. 
The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Let us analyze the facts and statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning. Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room. He forced open the door, which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. .10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door, more than enough time. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. But Holmes, how can you be certain that we'll find Miss White here? It is obvious, Watson. Just use your brain. I am using it. I do use it. Now that the rope has tightened around Martin Hamish, Miss White must act to erase all traces of her implication. After the suicide of her accomplice, there is one final trace remaining. The deadly plants of the Divine Syndicate. She will be there. Very good. Shall we go? Just one moment. Now listen to me, Watson. I shall see her alone. You will conceal yourself behind her. Quietly. Whatever are you planning? Nothing spectacular. The impulses of women have always been a mystery to me. But she is a bold one, and so we must be cautious. All right. You can count on me, Holmes. Mr. Holmes, good day to you. You do not seem surprised, Miss White. Well, I was expecting you. Not for too long, I believe. So please tell me, as it is still unclear, who planned the murder? 
Was it you? You were wrong, Mr. Holmes. It was Martin Hamish, then. You managed to convince him to take on a more prominent role. <laughs> you could not be further from the truth. You think that you can fool me? You don't care what I think. It is difficult to care about someone who is capable of pushing a man to his suicide. It is over, Miss White. The police will be here any minute. Over? Perhaps. One moment you were here, and the next, you were on the other side. The other side? No! Stop! I beg you not to do this, Miss White. Don't come any closer. Please remain calm. We can help you. Not one step further. Don't try to stop me. Stop this foolishness. You cannot truly want to die. No, it's too late. Well done, Watson. She was not faking. Miss White, you have no right to take your own life. Dr. Watson? Did you just save me? Or worse? 